good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Preet Bharara, and I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Uh, today, uh, we are honored to repatriate to the people of Mongolia the fossilized remains of over 18 dinosaurs recovered by my office in cooperation, close cooperation, with the Department of Homeland Security. This is a historic event for the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, in addition to being a prehistoric event. And we are, we are proud to participate in the return of these dinosaur skeletons to their rightful home. Uh, last year, at a ceremony much like this one, although it was in a different building, uh, our office returned a nearly complete and fully treated Tyrannosaurus batar skeleton to the people of Mongolia. Uh, that was only the beginning. Today we return a veritable nest of dinosaurs that includes two Tyrannosaurus batar skeletons, along with numerous other examples of fossils of dinosaurs native to the Gobi Desert. We are fortunate today to be surrounded by some of the fossils of themselves that we are going to be returning to Mongolia. Uh, in the box on the ground, <coughs> furthest to my right, uh, is a piece called the Graveyard of the Oviraptors. It's one piece of rock with four or five beasts from the Cretaceous period. Uh, they all met a common demise, not at the hands of smugglers, but at the hand of Mother Nature. They were originally thought to eat the eggs of other dinosaurs. Speaking of eggs, um, here on the table, <coughs> right next to me, with an apt uh, sign that says egg, uh, is an actual dinosaur egg. <coughs> Should it hatch, by the way, uh, in the way that the eggs in Jurassic Park did, you should know that that was not part of the plan. Uh, as I mentioned, Jurassic Park, uh, we also have a piece on the table featuring two skeletons of Gallimimus. That's this really extraordinary piece here. The dinosaurs that, by the way, memorably stampeded in one scene of that movie. <coughs> we also have some pictures um, throughout uh, the front here of dinosaur fossils that we are returning to Mongolia today along uh, as I said, behind me and to my, and to my left and also to my right. The people of Mongolia can now restore them and display them as, sim as symbols of their status as a star within the paleontology firmament and astonishing symbols really of Mongolian national pride. So how did we get here? <coughs> well, uh, you know, first there was a meteor. Fast forward 65 million years to just over two years ago when our office offered its assistance after the sale of a Tyrannosaurus batar at auction was stopped by an attorney retained by the government of Mongolia, Robert Painter. With the assistance of HSI, my office commenced an investigation that led to the filing of a civil action seeking the forfeiture of that Tyrannosaurus skeleton. The investigation also led, as you may know, to the successful criminal prosecution of an individual, Eric Prokopi, who had imported a slew of illegally looted Mongolian dinosaur fossils. And it led to the discovery of other dinosaur remains some of which were turned over voluntarily by a, by a British business partner of Eric Prokopi, and which my office secured through the filing of a number of additional successful civil actions. <clears throat> Among the fossils secured through this effort, many of which are depicted uh, behind me and to my right and left, are uh, two additional batars, two hydrosaur skeletons, an oviraptor skeleton, the graveyard of oviraptors that I described a minute ago, an ankylosaurus skeleton, an egg nest, a protoceratops skeleton, and other dinosaur fossils of Mongolian origin. Happily, we have a distinguished paleontologist with us, Mark Norell, who can tell us about these ancient and majestic creatures, and you'll hear from him in a couple of minutes. Uh, but suffice to say, a recovery of this sort is really without precedent. It is a haul sufficient uh, enough to stock a natural history museum, which I understand actually is currently being built in Mongolia. So we are honored, as we always are, when we have these kinds of return ceremonies, but especially so here, given the amount of materials that we are able to return to the people of Mongolia. <clears throat> this is a tremendous day for the office and for uh, all the government folks uh, and the private citizens who uh, played a role here. So I want to uh, acknowledge and thank first the extraordinary perseverance <clears throat> displayed by the assistance by, by the, uh, the government of Mongolia during the investigation. The Mongolian people never wavered in their dedication to protect uh, their really important and priceless cultural heritage. I would also like to thank Robert Painter for his assistance and role as liaison between our office and the President of, Mongo of Mongolia. I would also like to thank the numerous paleontologists who provided support with the forfeiture action, including, <coughs> as I already mentioned, Mark Norell, the Chairman and Curator of the Division of Paleontology at the American Museum of Natural History. He is, uh, shall we say, a Batar hero. Philip Curry, Professor uh, 
and Canada Research Chair of Dinosaur Paleobiology at the University of Alberta, as well as Drs. Sogbatar and Minjin. <clears throat> I also want to thank the career prosecutors in my own office who worked the civil and criminal forfeiture actions, uh, Sharon Cohen-Levin, Chief of the Money Laundering and Asset Forfeiture Unit, and AUSA Martin Bell, with assistance from Lisa Mendola D'Andrea of the same unit. Uh, and finally, we have, in a lot of cases, if you've been covering this office and coming to these kinds of ceremonies, a tremendous close partnership with HSI and its predecessor organization, ICE, um, and specifically with Jim Hayes, who's a special agent in charge, over the past two decades. I don't think there's a partnership like it anywhere in government, and it makes uh, uh, these kinds of ceremonies really special, I think. Um, we have worked cooperatively uh, with them to help locate, seize, and repatriate stolen art, antiquities, and other property. I feel like every few weeks, Jim and I get to stand here and return a priceless piece of something to some country in the world. Uh, this case, perhaps more than any, demonstrates the range of accomplishments that such a dynamic partnership can produce. So <coughs> with that, I would like to introduce uh, my partner in this case and so many other cases, Special Agent in Charge, Jim Hayes. Well, thank you, Preet, and good afternoon, everybody. And I, too, want to recognize Dr. Minjin uh, and Dr. Norell uh, for their invaluable assistance in this investigation, this series of investigations that uh, brings us here to today. I also want to acknowledge the Minister Counselor for Political Affairs and the Permanent Mission to the United Nations, Christopher Klein, who is with us here today as well. Uh, as Preet mentioned, today we're repatriating a collection of dinosaur fossils and eggs to the government of Mongolia, many of them here on display, uh, some physically and some in photos around the room. And the primary, maybe first investigation that brings us here today is one that is a continuation of a case that began a little more than a year ago. And in May last year, May 6 last year, Preet and our former director actually repatriated to the government of Mongolia a 70 million year old Tyrannosaurus batar, a uh, dinosaur skeleton that had been unearthed from the Gobi Desert and smuggled into the United States. Now picture for a minute that act, the act of smuggling an eight foot tall, 24 foot long Tyrannosaurus batar skeleton past U.S. Customs officers at any airport in the country. Of course, that's not what happened. Um, the skeleton was actually dismantled into hundreds of pieces and smuggled into the United States piece by piece, so much so that we actually needed the help of the perpetrator and the government of Mongolia needs the help of the per perpetrator to actually figure out how to put it back together so they can display it. We eventually caught up with commercial paleontologist Eric Prokopi and discovered that he was in the process of arranging that sale at auction of the Batar for more than a million dollars. And with the help of the Mongolian paleontologists here today and the Mongolian government, of course our partners at the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, we were able to seize the skeleton and we're happy to also find that Mr. Prokopi was recently sentenced to imprisonment and supervised release for smuggling conspiracy and sale and receipt of stolen goods. As our investigation continued, we learned that Mr. Prokopi had a vast inventory of illegally obtained fossil remains. Eight different seizures conducted by Homeland Security investigations as a result of legal actions brought by Preet and his attorneys in the Southern District of New York led to at least 31 fossilized dinosaur remains as well as lizard and turtle skeletons including those being returned today. The fossils we're returning today don't belong to any private collection or to any one owner. They belong to the people of Mongolia and they'll be proudly displayed in that museum that Preet talked about alongside the batar that we repatriated together last year. Now Homeland Security Investigations takes these types of investigations very seriously. And for those asking why we might be committed to investigating looted or stolen historical and cultural property of other nations, I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, federal customs laws give HSI the authority to take a leading role in criminal investigations that involve the illicit importation and distribution of stolen or looted cultural property. And while the plundering of cultural property is one of the oldest forms of organized cross-border crime, this type of crime has really become a worldwide phenomenon in the last 10 years. Uh, secondly, the United States is one of the top markets for illicit cultural property, art, and antiquities. The trade occurs primarily 
throughout the world in Hong Kong, London, and the U.S., and New York, of course, being the focus here in the United States of those collectors. Most importantly, investigating and returning objects that have been looted, robbed, and stolen from museums, temples, churches, and even private homes really is the right thing to do. HSI, together with our partners at the Southern District of New York, doing our part to preserve and protect history and culture for the study, research, and enjoyment of generations that follow us. Since 2007, more than 7,150 artifacts have been returned to 27 countries, among those paintings from France, Germany, Poland, and Austria, as well as centuries-old manuscripts and fossils from Italy and Peru, and artifacts from China, Cambodia, Iraq, and of course, Mongolia. We take great pride in returning these treasures. And I'd like to recognize a few people, uh, the few of the many people that participated in these investigations to make today possible. From my office, the New York HSI office, Deputy Special Agent in Charge, Glenn Sorge, Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Joe Lestrange, Group Supervisor Aaron Keegan, and Special Agent Dan Brazier. Special Agent Jason Pulowski from the HSI Denver office also contributed, as well as the HSI offices in Casper, Wyoming, Jacksonville, Florida, Los Angeles, California, and Cleveland, Ohio. Our attache offices in London and Beijing, and Customs and Border Protection offices in Los Angeles, New York, and throughout Florida. Finally, I want to thank again Preet for that tremendous partnership he described, uh, as well as those on his staff, Sharon Cohen-Levin, Martin Bell, and Lisa Mendola DeAndrea. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jim. And now my, it's my honor to, to call to the podium Dr. Norell, who you've heard a little bit about. Well, thank you. I'll make my remarks rather short, but nevertheless, it's such a pleasure to be here and it's such a pleasure to see some of these specimens returning to Mongolia, where they really belong. Uh, there's one over here which I'm particularly fond of. This one over here, which I think is one of the ones which was actually looted from one of the sites that we excavate in Mongolia itself. And uh, we know that it was hit really hard after we originally found it in the mid-1990s. Uh, on Monday, I'll be returning to Mongolia. It'll be my 25th year in the desert there, working in association with the Mongolian Academy of Sciences. But unlike these fossils, is that everything that we collect in Mongolia is the patrimony of the Mongolian people and gets Mongolian Academy of Sciences catalog numbers on it and is returned to Mongolia. Uh, during my two and a half decades now in the desert, it's been it, it, it's, it's been great. I think that I calculated one time I've spent about four years of my life in Mongolia. I should speak Mongolian, but I don't. Uh, I can, but nevertheless, it's been a really wonderful and fulfilling experience. I especially am very appreciative of the, the Mongolian government's commitment to bringing these fossils home, to actually making you know a deal and partnering with the authorities in the United States to be able to do this. I mean, fossil looting is a huge problem worldwide, and not all governments will really step up to be able to make the kinds of inquiries, make the kinds, and push it really along to where it needs to be so that we can actually get these things returned home. And by doing that, I think also decrease the market in these things so that people will think twice about wanting to spend a million dollars on something which that they m might think is, you know, looted, illegal, dirty, or whatever. Nevertheless, fossil looting around the planet remains a really big issue. Uh, I came back from the Carpathian Mountains last week, and we're even starting to see it deep in the Carpathian Mountains now. So that it's a real problem. I think that uh, it's one which things like this and conferences like this and you and the media, by pointing these two things out, can really help to make a real difference in this. And I just give my congratulations both to the Mongolian government as well as the U.S. Attorney's Office for you know, making all this happen. And let's hope that when these things get back to Ulaanbaatar that they'll be incredibly popular and incredibly well displayed when the museum finally comes into fruition. So thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. And finally, let me call to the podium uh, the Mongolian Ambassador to the United Nations, uh, Ad Uch. Thank you, Mr. Prit Basara, uh, Special Agent James Hayes, Dr. Norell. Uh, let me, uh, first of all, to extend my sincere appreciation to all of you for coming to the repatriation ceremony of dinosaurs uh, illegally smuggled from the territory of Mongolia. 
I would like to express my special thanks to the U.S. Attorney Office for the Southern, Southern District of New York, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, um, Department of Homeland Security Investigations. Uh, one year has elapsed since the sensational repatriation event of uh, Tarbazaros Batar, millions of years old uh, uh, dinosaur that was unearthed from the western Gobi Desert of Mongolia. Today we are happy to gather here for the handover ceremony, repatriating uh, s skeletons and fossils of uh, 18 dinosaurs that roamed with the dinosaur Batar in the territory of modern Mongolia million years ago. I would like to thank uh, all good-hearted people who were involved for their help and support to make this happen. On June 19, to, uh, 2004, uh, for, for 14, the ambassador of Mongolia to the United States, uh, Mr. Altangirel, signed an agreement with the international operations of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security on the repatriation of uh, Mongolia originated items collected at the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Department. Conclusion of this uh, agreement is significant in terms of enhancing capacity to identify and reclaim unique cultural heritage from illegal possessions and fostering international cooperation in this regard. This uh, um, case also uh, can be <coughs> uh, can be seen as a best uh, practice and the best example of uh, international cooperation in fighting crime, organized crimes. It should be underlined that this ceremony makes an important contribution to further development of excellent bilateral relations and cooperations between Mongolia and the United States of America and expansion of cultural relations between our two countries. Ladies and gentlemen, I, it's my great uh, privilege uh, to thank all of you again, and I wish you all the success in your endeavors, good health, and all the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And so, as you may know, no repatriation ceremony is complete without signing something with a fancy pen. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I don't know if there are questions. You may have some that Dr. Norell is particularly able to answer. Uh, if not, I think these will be up here for a little bit for people to enjoy before they're uh, uh, swift, swiftly taken away to, to the government of Mongolia.